Got a past exam question here on Year 12 Equilibrium and Enthalpy, which you can use to test yourself on these two topics. So if you want to have a go, the link to the questions in the description of the videos, so just click on that and play the video for the answers. Okay, so part A suggests sources for the nitrogen and hydrogen used by the chemical industry. So nitrogen obviously is sourced from the air. 78% of the air is nitrogen. And the obvious choice for hydrogen is water. You could have gone for natural gas, CH4, which obviously contains a high proportion of hydrogen. Part B, sort of classic Le Chatelier's principle. So we've got to predict the conditions of pressure and temperature that would give the maximum equilibrium yield of ammonia. In other words, which conditions would, would favour the forwards reaction. So if we look at temperature first, it's all based on the sign of the enthalpy change for the forward reaction. So because the forward reaction's exothermic, we can tell from the minus sign, that means a low temperature will favour that reaction. So that's what it was saying for temperature. Low temperature forward reaction is exothermic. In terms of pressure, it's all to do with the numbers of moles of gas on each side of the equation. So there are fewer moles of gas on the right hand side, so only two moles of gas on the right versus four on the left. So a high pressure would favour the forwards reaction. Part C, so the classic follow-up question to B, talking about why the chemical industry might use different um, conditions of temperature and pressure to the ones um, derived from Le Chatelier's principle. So temperature first, if the temperature is too low, the rate's too slow. And high pressures aren't generally used um, because they're expensive to maintain. Or you could say that they increase the safety risks. Um, interestingly, the mark scheme for this question didn't allow high pressures are dangerous. Part D now, so state two ways the use of the iron catalyst helps the chemical industry manufacture ammonia more sustainably and with less harm to the environment. So I've come up with four there, so any two of these would be fine. You could say it allows a lower temperature to be used, so there's lower energy consumption. Less fossil fuels use, so lo lower carbon emissions. Allows alternative reactions with higher atom economies. Or you could say allows alternative reactions which involve less toxic chemicals. Question now moves into the enthalpy topic. So part E, first bit of part E, what's meant by the term average bond enthalpy? So it's the average enthalpy change when one mole of, this isn't essential, but it's, it's technically in the definition, gaseous covalent bonds is broken. Next part of the question, we've got to calculate the enthalpy change for this reaction here, obviously using those bond enthalpy values. So I call this an in minus out. So the E in, the energy in, that's to break all the bonds in the reactants. So in each mole of NH3, we've got three NH bonds. So in four moles, we'd have 12. So we multiply the average enthalpy change uh, for the NH bond by 12, so we get that value there. Three moles of O2 is effectively breaking three OO double bonds, 1494. So the sum of those is 6186. And then moving on to the energy that's released, the energy that comes out when the bonds in the products are made. So we've got two moles of N2, so that's two times the NN triple bond value, so it gets to 1890. One mole of H2O contains two moles of HO bonds, so six moles will contain 12. So we multiply the OH value by 12, we get 5568, five, add them together, 7458. And then we just do the in minus out, and that gets us the enthalpy change for this reaction at minus 1272 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so the final part of the question, I think it's quite tricky this one, so I'll take my time explaining it and hopefully it'll all make sense. So the standard enthalpy change of combustion for ammonia is different to that calculated above, the one that we got minus 1272 for. Um, we're given some extra information, so to go from liquid H2O to gaseous H2O, the enthalpy change is plus 44 kilojoules per mole we've got to calculate the standard enthalpy change of combustion of ammonia using the enthalpy change previously calculated and this new information. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is going to go down here. This is the equation that represents the standard enthalpy change of combustion of ammonia. So that's for one mole of substance being completely combusted. 
and notice that the water or the H2O that's formed in this equation is in the liquid form because we're in standard conditions. So if you think about it, we've got this equation here, which is effectively four times that one. Um, but we've got to then go, we've got to change those six moles of gaseous H2O into six moles of liquid H2O. The value we've got is to go liquid to gas. So if we go in gas to liquid, it's going to be minus 44. So that's kilojoules per mole. So the six moles of H2O to go from gas to liquid. So it's minus 44 times six. So what I'm saying is effectively four enthalpy changes of combustion for ammonia is equal to that plus six times that. So four enthalpies of combustion minus 1536. We just want one mole's worth for the, to fit the definition. So we divide that by four, we get minus 384. So I hope that that made some sense for you.